again, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna talk a little bit while we're playing different songs, and and um, you know, I think first, uh, first things first is really talk about the instruments that we have on stage this evening. Um, what Mark is playing is, uh, and actually I am as well, is uh, our electrified versions of uh, traditional instruments. So Mark is, and maybe Mark you could play a little bit while we're to give you an idea. So what Mark is playing is um, an electrified version of a traditional instrument called an oud. And the oud is the uh, great grandfather um, of the guitar. It's a lute type instrument that has 11 strings. So they really do depend. Uh, 
uh, depending on the instrument. But uh, as Tom said, three strings are tuned in unison. So very different than the oud. The oud has 11 strings. I, I have a math degree from the university here. Yeah. You probably have 72 strings. Is there 72 <laughs> strings? <laughs> So these these strings are tuned in unison. Three strings are tuned in unison. They they rest upon a bridge. Uh, the bridge uh, on an acoustic instrument. This um, sort of platform that it sits on would be normally skin. And so there would be normally about you know ten to fifteen thousand pounds of pressure from the strings on onto this uh, onto this instrument. And you can see on here on the other side. Do you notice I'm making taking more time to talk about my instrument than <laughs> you? I hope you're realizing that, mathematician. Um, the the strings rest on, rest on a series of levers. And um, the Turks call them mandals, the Arabs call them orabs. And these levers really change and help bend the note. So, Mark, can you kind of play a little bit of a, uh, a scale where you're bending some of the notes? All right, here. Here's a traditional Armenian song in pure A minor. B and change it to a B half flat. See how it changes the whole tone of the song, the whole spirit of the. No. <laughs> I had a tin ear as long as I've known it. <laughs> Sounds virtually the same. No. <laughs> but so on the oud, he has to do that with fingering, right? So on the, the, the kanun, which is a granddaddy of the piano, and it goes all the way back to the fifth century, I'm able to change that tone through the levers. So um, these levers are very exact, uh, like a piano. So where you see different musicians that tune to a piano, this kind of operates the same way. So if I'm, just to give you an example, and, and some of these, depending on the, the notes, the levers, the amount of levers, obviously vary. But here is an E natural, and then here is E flat, and here's A sharp. Now listen to some of the difference from going from sort of an, an E natural as I start bending that note down to an E flat.
talk about these two instruments real quick. Um, right next to me here, Jerry is playing uh, the dumbbells. And um, in the Arabic world, they call them derbeki, or they call them darbuka, and the Armenians and the Turks call them dumbbells. And, and basically, they are what they are, hourglass-shaped uh, hand drums. And uh, Jerry has been playing two drums like this for really most of his professional career. Uh, one which has got a sort of a, a, a louder sound, a doom sound again, right? And then a peck, kind of a very sharp tune. Right? So that's where it kind of gets the name from. So uh, this has been played, you know, for for many decades, uh, you know, I think through um, probably the last century and before, it was a, a single drum, a double, which was sort of a big bass drum that, that was kind of played. The uh, guitar. Be, it's going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> so the guitar was really adopted uh, back in the 60s. So this is Elvis's fault. <laughs> okay, very true, very true. So uh, rock and roll really kind of helped shape and add sort of that rhythm to it where it's drum and guitar. Can you, can you guys play just like a little, uh, little something so they can just hear what the rhythm section sounds like? <laughs> Each and every time, 
Because he was playing music. The oud? Oh, no, 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 he was playing. That'd be a neat trick if he was playing the oud while he was driving. He had every cassette in the car, and he was playing music. And this was sort of his downtime, taking me home, but he was playing music. And so I really got exposed to listening to music because of babysitting his kids. Now the difference is I'm a raging alcoholic, and I let him know. No, I said, but Mark is going to sing uh, in a, a very old Armenian song. You know, a little bit about what the, the meaning of the song is. It's a it's a love song. It's written by an Armenian troubadour from maybe a, a 120, 130 years ago. It's called Sadi Sirunyad. It's um, my my love from the mountains. Armenia is a very mountainous country, and it's Hazar uh, Nazoviad Hoveriyet Bet Hediyek. Thousand uh, Nazo, which is a playful boyfriend or girlfriend, depending on who's singing it. The wind has brought me, brought your scent to me. Um, with a, a bunch of flowers, you've, you've brought the love, another lovely scent to me. On my black horse, I come to your village and I knock on your door, but no one answers. And it's Sadi Sidunyar, Sadi Mechaber. What will I do that no one answers the door? I cannot see you. And it's in a 10 8 rhythm. And we're playing it in a Western style 10 8 rhythm. So enjoy the song, Sadi Sidunyar.
from a lot of the music that we play, um, you know, going back, let's say to, I would say the mid-60s, a lot of jazz musicians really liked the music that we played. And they still do, and they get it. So if you were to play or to show sheet music of this music now to a classical musician, eh, they may stroke out. If you show this to a jazz uh, musician, they'll get it. And they get it for a couple of reasons. They get it for the rhythms. They get it for, like Mark was showing you, the, the different kind of solos and how we sort of bend the tunes. And what's always been really unique for Armenian musicians uh, is that we will be, we're able to play a, a, a wide array of different types of music. So Greek musicians play Greek music, Arabic musicians predominantly play Arabic music. Armenians can play a lot of different kind of music. We'll, we'll, we can play Jewish, Hebrew music, Greek, Arabic, Turkish, Persian, Macedonian. <laughs> that too. And so uh, what we'd like to play for you next is uh, an Arabic tune. Uh, it is called Nahawan Fantasia. You've all heard it, right? <laughs> right. So, Nahawan is a name of a scale. So all of the scales that we play really have different names to them. Um, and they uh, vary a little bit between the Arabic and sort of the Turkish Armenian cultures. Uh, but this is a song that was uh, written by an oud player, uh, an oud musician composer named uh, Muhammad al-Wahhab. Uh, back in the 30s and, and 40s. And the only thing that I would say is we're going to play sort of a portion of that song, which is really interesting. Arabic music, if you've ever heard Arabic music, and you should if you haven't, folk music and traditional music, it's very lengthy. And so what's interesting is us as Armenian musicians have taken clips in mainly the beginnings of a lot of these songs have turned them into their own sort of dance tunes. So this is sort of a, a very popular song. We do it quite a bit. A lot of people like dancing to it. It's, it's got a nice, uh, interesting rhythm to it. So we hope you enjoy it.
things that um, wanted to kind of share. Um, so about three years ago, it was the um, thank you. Three years ago was the hundredth anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Do all of you, by a show of hands, do you know what the Armenian Genocide is? Okay, that's good. A good majority. Of you. What's that? A lot of us are Armenians. Oh, there we go. Cool. So those for those of you that don't know, in um, to shorten this version, back in uh, 100 years ago, 1915, a million and a half Armenians were slaughtered, massacred by order of the Turkish government. It wasn't the first time Armenians were massacred, but certainly was probably the most predominant. Uh, I bring that up because I think it's important to put some things in perspective. Three years ago, I did a, a documentary um, called The Guardians of Music. And what it was about was about the musicians um, that played this kind of music. So none of us on stage are full-time musicians. We would never dress this well if we were. <laughs> Well, I know Mark throws it off, but, but we do this music. The half Argyle sweater. Yeah, we do this music because we enjoy playing this music. It's really in our blood to do this music. It's uh, not a calling, necessarily, um, but it is It's something that we really love to perpetuate. And it's not anything that we do full time. And the documentary that I put together paid um, tribute to musicians that came way before us that played this music um, similarly as we do. They had jobs uh, like all of us in this room have had. They worked for the auto industry. They lived near, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, Ford was the primary uh, employer for a lot of Armenians back in the day. And so they work all day. They come home, they shower, they change, they eat their dinner, wolf their dinner out, and then they were off. They grab their instruments and they go to the clubs, which we don't have a lot of anymore. Or they go to the dance, the Armenian dance or whatever it was. And they play until uh, probably 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. They go home, they go home, sleep a few more hours, they get up and they do this whole routine again. And how amazing that musicians uh, and these people really just perpetuated this music over the years. Because I have to tell you, we have no sheet music for this music. We have learned all of this music by ear. Whether it's for us, uh, a lot of it is watching other musicians play, or if it's records. Anybody here too young that doesn't know what a record is? All right. Records, cassettes, and that's how we learn music. Think about our ancestors and how did they learn this music? this way, right? They sat and they listened to another musician because that person listened to another musician. And so when you when you talk about an Armenian genocide and all of these refugees that left their country or forced to leave their country, and what did they have on what did they have to take with them? The clothes on their back and maybe the songs in their heart. Right? That's all they had. So the fact that this music has stayed alive for over a hundred years without sheet music, sheet music is absolutely amazing. And the fact that we still have this music and that we play this music is absolutely amazing. And so it 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 
bears that sort of comment that needs to be made of, of how we learn and, and how over the decades this music has been preserved. And we're talking village music. You know, a lot of this music, you know, as, as Mark had translated a little bit, um, and these are folk songs. This isn't like deep thought music, you know. We're talking about uh, lyrics that could be, well, Mark, why don't you, you, you know it better than I do. What, what are some of these kinds of lyrics translated? What, what does it sound like? The next song we're going to play is called Giniga, means the woman, and it's actually a very playful song. From the beginning of the world, it's been this way, the woman. Uh, she's been the, uh, basically the uh, frustration of the man. And uh, for any woman, there's no closed door. She always has the same key to every locked door. And she's kind of a Satan in a, in a snake shirt. And poor Adam, she fooled him with the apple. So that's uh, the song Good He Got. My wife hates the song. Good thing she's not here tonight. But she would not like me to sing it. And, and after that, we'll go into another song that's a much more playful, fun Armenian song called Im Chinari Yara. My um, happy girlfriend. And you'll like that as well. But. Kaniga is a very fun song, so we'll play that. And Ashkarin Skispen, I suppose Kaniga.
Thank you very much.